So I get comments every so often that frame or motion is slow or that it leads to choppy, bad animations. Now this can be true, but only if you don't really know what you're looking for. So today we're gonna learn how you can fix it. As always, no sponsors on my videos, but I do run a website called hover.dev. It is full of animated UI components for React and Tailwind CSS. If that's something that sounds interesting, there'll be a link in the description. And anyways, onto the video. Okay, so we're actually gonna start by just taking a look at the place nobody ever wants to look at, which is the documentation. So I'm just on frame or motion's main documentation, and I'm on a page for motion values. So this is under overview, under motion values. And here we can kind of learn a little bit more about motion values. I'm not gonna do a super deep dive into motion values right here, but essentially what you need to know is under the hood, whenever you're animating things with something like the animate prop, which you should be familiar with if you've learned kind of the basics of frame or motion, those are all using motion values. Now you can also use motion values directly. So if we look at their example, they have uh, like, you know, X here is equal to use motion value. And they're just passing that into a style prop. As we read through this, there's kind of a couple of things that you can note, but the most important thing to note for me is this line right here which says update visual properties without triggering React's render cycle. And this is really, really important to understand. Now you can pass things like a use state value to the style props or the animate props of a uh, motion div or you know a motion element, but we're gonna see that that causes re-renders because we have to update the state, which causes re-render. Now this is not the case with motion values. And for this, we can look at a kind of very basic example like what I have here. Let me kind of just delete some of this stuff. And we can take a look at my example here. So if we look up here at the top, I just have a use state with a default value of one. This is going to be passed in as the opacity just for my style prop of my motion div. And then whenever I move my mouse, I'm updating it to a value between zero and one just based on the mouse. Now this is not a super you know intensive animation on its own, but what I would like to note is this console log that I have here. So I have a use effect hook, which is triggering a console log that just says render. And this is going to render on every re-render because we're not passing in any dependency array here, right? So we have no dependency array, meaning that this is going to trigger any time that this component has to re-render. And what I want you to do is just look at this number right here. So essentially, as I move my mouse from left to right, it's just becoming lighter and darker. And we'll see that every time I move it, we get a new log there. Now, because this doesn't have much to re-render, not that big of a deal. If this is all you needed to do, you're probably not gonna run into any performance issues, but you can imagine that that if you had maybe some kind of parallax effect or some kind of tilting effect or something, and you were using normal state values, this could start to run pretty slow because you have to re-render, you know, potentially a large component over and over and over again, based on some event that fires a lot. Now the workaround for something like this, if I remove what I deleted a minute ago, is just to replace our use states with use motion value. I'm gonna keep everything else the same. We still have our use effect here with our console log. What we're gonna see is whenever this first mounted, we get our render, but as I move my mouse, we're not getting additional renders, right? So under the hood, frame or motion is taking this and it is directly changing this element without causing a re-render and kind of the react cycle. And I'll say that probably half of the time, maybe that I run into performance issues, it's because I'm not remembering to use motion values, I'm using a state value instead, which is causing excessive re-renders where they don't actually need to be happening. Now, I think that covers it pretty well for motion values, but there is one other thing which I wanted to mention, which is making sure that you are up to date on the docs for hardware acceleration. So I'll make sure that I have links to everything that I'm covering here in the description. But if you actually take the time to go and read through the docs, one of the things you're going to see is that hardware acceleration is enabled only for specific features in specific use cases. So if you run into choppy animations, it's probably because you're not actually kind of following the best practices for what you're supposed to do to make sure that frame or motion can do a good job at accelerating your animations. Now I'm not gonna read through everything here, but one thing I'll just kind of I'll kind of skip down down here and we'll see supported values for hardware acceleration are transform, opacity, clip path, and filter. Now there is a note right here. We're gonna see transform motion allows animating independent transforms like X and scale, like the shorthand properties while browsers don't. Therefore, hardware acceleration only works when transform itself is animated. There's a couple of different uh, points in the docs where this is kind of refuted. I don't actually know that this is still the case. I don't see this specifically being the case so much anymore. Like uh, one example, let me see if I can find it. 
Yeah, so here's one example. We'll see performance. This is under motion, under motion components. We'll say motion animates values outside of the React render cycle for increased performance, et cetera, et cetera. Where possible, animate just transform values in opacity as these are GPU accelerated. And you'll see in their example here that they're actually passing in X as well as on the transform section of, I think this, this same doc, they're gonna call out X, Y, Z, et cetera. And they're you know, passing those in. So I actually don't know that that specific rule is still in place. If you are seeing issues, definitely play with it, you know, depending on what version of frame or motion you're on. Maybe this used to be the case. I don't see it being an issue as much anymore. But one thing that I do still see being an issue is running into where we see these unsupported features down here. So even if you are making sure that you're only animating your transform properties and opacity and things like that, that are kind of listed here, you're not going to get hardware acceleration if you're not meeting all of these cases down here. So the motion component has an on update prop. If you have an on update prop, this is not going to work. The value is passed as a motion value via the style prop. That's not going to work. If repeat delay is set, not going to work. If repeat type is set as mirror, if damping for spring animations is set to zero, if any of these are the case, you're not going to see GPU acceleration. Now, before we actually look at the code example for this really quick, I will say this isn't necessarily something you need to be thinking about all the time. If you have a whole bunch of stuff you're trying to animate and you're seeing it start to get choppy, then maybe move back and see where you can improve these things. But in general, get your animations and your interactions where they need to be. And if you're running into any issues, I'll generally work backwards from there. Now, looking at some code as a very basic example of what I'm talking about here, we just have this motion div, which is just a square. It's kind of pink square we see going back and forth. And all that it's doing is animating from left to right on the with an X transform, right? So this is the same as saying like transform and then doing like, you know, your translate X and passing these in as strings. It's just kind of a shorthand. You can just pass in X instead. Now you could imagine that a similar way to do this exact same thing would be using the left or right properties. So if I save this, we're going to see that we get what looks like the exact same animation, but it's not really the same animation, right? This is using transforms. This is using left positioning. This, this transform should be GPU accelerated, whereas left is not. So if you're running into issues with performance and things, Often you might be seeing something like this where you're not animating something that could otherwise be animated using a transform, which can then be accelerated. And the solution in cases like that, it's just to kind of go back to what I had originally, right? Just make sure that you're animating only those different properties that Framer Motion has noted as being able to be GPU accelerated. I feel like I've said that 10 times in this video so far. Now, really just with these two things in mind, 95% of the performance issues that I end up hitting when I'm using Framer Motion can be fixed. Of course, there are other little pitfalls here and there, other little bugs that pop up just with the framework that can cause other issues. But almost every time somebody comes into my Discord or something and says, hey, why is this so slow? It boils down to one of these things. Now, if you've gotten anything out of this video, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. I make a whole bunch of content on Framer Motion. Again, check out my website if you want to check out a bunch of cool components. And I think that's about it. See you guys next time. Peace.